And we're off to the races. Okay, so, um, good morning. We're gonna just kind of kick it off with a, a brief review, not really doing anything uh, because we're gonna apply everything from last week in this week's uh, stuff. So don't worry about that. Uh, but just as a quick reminder of what we did do, we talked about intervals, right? So we talked about intervals and inequalities, right? So in and inequalities, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, right? All that kind of fun stuff. So we spent a little bit of time first thing on that, and then we moved on to absolute values. We talked about the properties of absolute values. Essentially, it just makes values positive, uh, but then also using the absolute value to find the distance between two points. So we found, uh, we talked about absolute values. We talked about their properties and also the distance between two points. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> after the absolute values, we started talking, we talked about exponents, we talked about the laws of exponents, which I'm expecting you to be uh, comfortable with and also fluent in, right? So using these exponents, uh, and we'll see tons of exponents today, so we'll get lots of practice there, but, but I am expecting you to get a little bit, um, you know, more comfortable with exponents. So we talked about exponents. And um, we established the laws of exponents. And those are the ones that I'm expecting you to be really fluent in. Uh, we also talked about scientific notation, which involves exponents, scientific notation. And then we finished off by talking about the nth root. Now, we didn't really talk much about it, but we did say that, okay, if I have the nth root, How I'm going to show that is I have the nth root of a, for example. But on our calculator, what we do is, and we could rewrite the nth root of a as a to the power of 1 over n. All right. So this is how we, we calculate the nth root on our calculator. And a lot of the time, we're going to rewrite the nth root as just an exponent. right? And that's why we have to be so comfortable with the laws of exponents. So that's where we ended today, but we're going to keep talking about the nth root and the properties of the nth root. But essentially, the nth root, um, I think of it as undoing uh, the power of n. And so uh, we use the nth root to undo. I'll put those in kind of air quotes because it's not really a technical term uh, to undo or or kind of cancel uh, or cancel powers of n. Okay, so in general, and there are some some caveats that we'll establish later, but in general, if you have a to the power of four then taking the fourth root of that, these guys would just cancel, boom, boom, and you're left with just A. So now the reason for that is because we could just write, so since the fourth root of A to the four is A to the four, all to the power of one over four. But because of these exponents, right, I know how these exponents uh, react when I'm multiplying. Well, I can just multiply them across. And this is technically a fraction times a fraction, right? Four over one 
but I'm not going to write that. I'm just going to remember that, okay, I can treat this and just multiply it across. So I get a to the power of four over four. Four over four is just one. So then I have a to the power of one, anything to the power of one, we can just ditch the one and say that's just a. Okay. So that's the reason behind it. And we're going to do this a lot, right? Rewriting the uh, the root as a fraction, or as a, a fraction in the exponent, I should say. Okay, so let's talk about the properties. Uh oh, spaghetti! -o. I don't have the fundamentals part two, but I have them here. So maybe what I'll do is I'll squeeze, get them into our our section. It's not in fundamentals part two, but we'll need it later, so that's all right. Um, here is where we are. Oh, okay. I'm losing my voice already, too. So, um, we've got some properties of the nth root. Like I said, there are some ins and outs, but in general, not, not too bad. So keep this on the same page. If we kind of dissect it, right, knowing that we can write the nth root of a times b as a times b all to the power of 1 over n, by our laws of exponents, I know I can break it, those a and b's up, right, and just have a to the 1 over n times b to the 1 over n. Right, so that's where the, the laws of exponents come in. And um, so I'm allowed to do that because I'm multiplying under the square root, right? I'm multiplying with the, in the exponent. So, uh, or under the exponent, I guess. So here, this one should follow kind of organically, right? So, uh, and even the second, um, property of the nth root is that if I'm taking the nth root, so that's of a over b, well that's basically a over b to the power of 1 over n, so all to the power of 1 over n. We know from the rules of exponents that we're allowed to just break that up over the numerator and the denominator uh, and rewrite it that way. So these follow just from the rules of exponents, right, and just using the fact that we uh, we write or we can absolutely rewrite the nth root as an exponent. Right? And so that's why we had to spend so much time establishing the, the laws of exponents. Might not feel like we spent a lot of time, but we, we did. And we'll see lots. So if we have a look at uh, property number three, if I have the nth root of the nth root of a, well, I should be able to rewrite that as the mnth root of a, and I'll show you why. So if I've got the uh, nth, oh, sorry. If I've got the nth root of a, and then on the outside of that, I've got the mth root. Okay. Let's rewrite these in terms of exponents and see where the exponents get us. So what I've got is I've got the mth root of a to the 1 over n. Okay, that's fine. That mth root I can rewrite as a to the 1 over n to the power of 1 over m. Now, right, laws of exponents say that I'm just multiplying these two fractions. So that's why we had to learn how fractions behave, right? So now I'm multiplying fractions, that's fine. And so we've got a to the 1 over n times m. And that's how we get to, so now we can rewrite that as a root, the n m is the root. Okay. okay. 
So that's where we get this property three from. But all of these properties above, um, we can manipulate using just the laws of exponents. Okay. Here's a thing. So if we take the nth root of a to the power of n, that's going to give us a. And we kind of, we saw that here, but I did say that there is a little caveat, right? And so uh, what we need to keep in mind is that we can do that if n is odd. Now, so we can take the odd root of anything. We can take the odd root of a negative number uh, and we'll get a negative number. But here's the pickle. Um, if we're taking an even root, then we can't take the even root of a negative number. So what we're seeing here, uh, maybe, we can't take the even root of a negative number, right? So we need some way to deal with that. Just like we can't divide by zero, this is just a rule. So we can't take the, the root of a, ne or the even root of a negative number. We can take an odd root, uh, but not an even root. And so uh, if you try something like taking the square root, because you've got a, a probably a square root button on your calculator, so the square root of negative 2, for example, you should get something like math error or something. So your calculator won't let you do it because say, it can't be done. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. So just like you can't divide by 0, we can't take the even root of a negative number. And so we have to have ways to deal with that. And so this just outlines it. So uh, notice that the powers and the root are the same. So we're only talking about that instance. But if you have um, an odd root, then you can have an odd power inside. So a to the power of 3, the third root of a to the power of 3 is just going to be a. Um, and if n is even, so let's say the square root, you could have a squared, the square root of a squared is just a, but if a is um, negative, you'd have to take the absolute value to ditch that negative. Okay. It also helps that the if you take an even power, right, it's going to make it positive, right? Taking squaring a number, any number is going to give you a positive number. We'll deal with more more with that later. Okay, so we've got these, um, these properties. Let's do a, a quick example. I feel like I'm always saying quick example. They're not necessarily quick. Uh, I just mean we're squeezing one in. My printer just started making noise. Um, okay, so if we want to simplify, simplify the third root of a squared b, and I'm going to put a little lip on my root, <laughs> haunted indeed, yeah, uh, it's just me and the dog home. Um, spooky. Uh, oh, I guess it's the first day of fall. Is it the first day of fall? Halloween? It works. So I put a little lip on my, on my square root if I'm being careful, um, especially if I'm dealing with something like this, where I'm then going to take the third root again of the 64 a to the 4 times b. So if I want to simplify this, right, then I'm dealing with the nth root, so the third root in this case, but essentially I'm just dealing with a bunch of exponents, right? And so if we have to simplify this, 
then there are a couple of ways that we can do it because we're just multiplying all the way across here. We're multiplying a bunch of exponents essentially. And so I'm allowed to break up the third root on the a squared and the b and the 64 and the a to the fourth and the b. And um, for now, I think that might be the easiest way to do it. Uh, what's another way I could do it? Hmm. I could combine these third roots. Maybe that's nice too. Yeah, maybe that's a good way to go. If I just smoosh these all under a third root, I'm allowed to do that because uh, by this property here, so by the first property, right, I've essentially got the, the third root of A times the third root of B. As long as it's the same root, I'm able to combine them and multiply inside the root. So let's use that. So then I've got the third root of A squared B times 64 A to the fourth B. Notice that I'm gonna use brackets just to show that okay, this lump of stuff came from the first root and this one came from the second root. Um, but I'm allowed to do that by the first property. So now inside I can simplify and uh, I've got a squared times a to the fourth. I know how those uh, powers behave, right? I'm just gonna add them up. And then I've got b times b, putting me at b squared. And then the 64 just stays 64 for now. So I've got the third root of a times two plus four, or a to the power of two plus four, I should say, b to the power of one plus one times 64. In fact, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the 64 out front. It's just a way to make it look cleaner, just having that 64 out front. Um, because otherwise the six can end up looking like a B and uh, you just don't want to trick yourself. So now I've got the third root of 64 times A to the six times B squared. So if I want to simplify this, I could try to simplify things a little bit by doing basically the opposite of what I did here. Right here, I, I combined everything under the same root, but now what if I split this up and have everything as a third root? So now I'm gonna have these individual elements all under the third root, and I'm allowed to do that again by property number one. So I can rewrite this as the third root of 64. And with a little bit of luck, right, the third root of 64 is some nice number will be but um but it'll just be a matter of you know will it work will it not work uh then i've got the third root of a to the sixth and the third root of b squared rewriting these as uh fractions in the exponents right these third roots is going to make it easier to see if i can simplify stuff Right, especially testing out the third root of 64 on our calculator, there is no third root button, so we're gonna have to do 64 to the power of one over three. So I'm just gonna write that out. 64 to the one over three times a to the six times one over three. You could skip to just two, right? Six over three is two. And then times b to the power of 2 times 1 over 3. 64 to the power of 1 over 3. So we talked about this last day, but I just want to emphasize it because it's going to be really important. If you do 64 to the power of, and all calculators behave a little bit differently, but to the power of 1 over 3, on my calculator, let's see if I can show there. Um, it shows that the one divided by three is in the power, right? If it doesn't show you 
you'll have to put brackets around there just to make sure that it's all in the power. Okay, turns out it's four. So make sure your calculator is doing what you expect it to do. It should give you four. And then I've got a to the power of um, six over three, so a squared. And then I've got b to the power of two over three. There's nothing I can do about that, so I'm just gonna leave it as two over three. make it look a little bit nicer. The b to the two over three, I'm going to rewrite as the third root of b squared. So just going back to here, um, there was nothing I could do to simplify it. And so then the roots just look a little bit nicer than the fractions in the exponents. So 4a squared times the third root of b squared. And that's it. So, uh, let's talk about this next one. So the rational exponents. So essentially, if you've got a fraction in the exponent, I feel like we already kind of saw that here, but let's just talk about it again. So if we have um, a power of m over n, right? So much like we had here, so 2 over 3, well, that's going to be, so the, the denominator is going to be your root and the m is going to be your power. So you can rewrite it a couple of different ways, just manipulating the, the laws of exponents. But usually we end up writing it like this, right? a to the m over n is the nth root of a to the power of m. Um, and if we're taking an even root, then we need a to be greater than or equal to zero, right? We can only take an even root of a positive number. Good. Let's do another uh, example. I've got them on the side here. So if we want to simplify, and eliminate negative exponents. Of, okay, I've got 16 u to the 3 times v over u times v to the fifth, and then that's all under the square root, that whole fraction. So again, there are a couple of things that I'm allowed to do here, right? I'm allowed to break up the square root over both the numerator and the denominator because I'm only multiplying inside and only multiplying and dividing, I should say. So I'm allowed to do that by property two, I think. Yep, here, so I'm allowed to do that. Um, I think it might be easier because the goal is to simplify. So I think it might be easier to just deal with the inside first and then go through and deal with the, with the root. So that's what I'm going to do. Now we've got these uh, exponents in the denominator. We know if we make them negative, we can bring them up to the numerator. And that's how we're going to be able to cancel the u to the 3 and the u down here. right? Or if, depending on your comfort level, right, you might just be able to say u to the 3 minus 1 times v to the 1 minus 5, right? Doing the same thing, just kind of uh, skipping ahead in your head. Ahead in your head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be writing everything on the same on the same level, right? So I'm bringing those the u v to the fifth up to the numerator. So I've got 16 times u to the three times v. Let me make that look like v times u to the negative one times v to the negative five, right? So that's why we had to be able to deal with 
uh, those negative exponents and bringing them up and kind of simplifying. So that's where we started. Kind of. um, but notice that everything's now on the same playing field, so I'm not dealing with that fraction anymore. So now I can combine these like bases, right? I've got u to the 3 times u to the negative 1. So how I know those exponents behave, right, is they're just going to add up. So um, Oh, good. Just making sure everyone's on, on mute. Everyone's good. Um, so I've got the 16, so the root of 16, and then I've got u to the 3 plus negative 1, and then v to, to the power of 1 plus negative 5. <clears throat> page here. So now I've got 16 and this is all under the square root. u to the 3 plus negative 1, that's 2, and then v to the 1 minus 5, negative 4. Now that I'm simplified in here, right, I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier and split up the square root over each of these terms to see if I can eliminate anything. Remember, I'm allowed to do that because I'm multiplying in here. So now I have the root of 16 times the root of u squared times the root of v to the negative 4. The first two terms you should just be able to see and say, okay, well, I can take the root of 16, it's 4. I can take the root of u squared, that's just u, right? So I've got 4u, and then I've got v to the negative 4, because this one's a little bit, not, trick, not a lot trickier, but a little bit trickier. v to the negative 4 times 1 over 2. Oops. Negative 4 over 2 is negative 2, right? So I've got 4u v to the negative 2. So close, right? We want to simplify, so that's simplified, right? And eliminate negative exponents. So we don't want this negative exponent here, but we can just easily rewrite it as 4u over v squared. Done. Okay. <sighs> I'm keeping an eye on the chat, so if you do have a question, then just throw it in the, in the chat, but otherwise I'll just keep going. Okay. Uh, good. So, we're going to be talking about rationalizing the denominator and standard form. We'll start with just rationalizing the denominator. Okay. So, sorry, my throat isn't trained yet. Um, it's only what second week of classes. First week doesn't count. Um, So uh, a lot of the time, especially in calculus, if you have a, a radical, so a radical is just a root. I'll make a note of that here. Uh, oops. A radical is just a root. So if you have a root in the denominator, a lot of the time it's going to be more useful to, uh, to eliminate that. So we want to kind of shift to the root from the denominator and we'll, we'll sacrifice the numerator to have that, that radical or that root. So um, what we end up doing is we kind of, we say that we want to standard, standardize or put it into standard form and that's eliminating any radicals in the denominator. Okay. We can also call it rationalizing the denominator uh, putting it into standard form. 
So same. So if we've got uh, root A in the denominator, then to be able to, to kind of remove that and, and not have a root in the denominator, what we have to do is that trick that we've talked about before, where we multiply by one, but we pick some convenient value of one, right? And so we've got kind of, um, if we wanna get rid of a root A, so here we've got a, a one over root A that we want to uh, rationalize. So what we have to do is we can say, okay, well, that's the same as one over root A times one. But then I'm going to replace that one with um, with root a over root a because that's what I'm trying to get rid of here. So I've got root a over root a. Now I'm multiplying fractions, which we know how to do, right? If I'm multiplying, that's easy. I just multiply across. So I've got one times root a times root a over root uh, times root a. So I've got uh, root a on the top, root a times root a just gives me A, right? And so now I've removed that, um, that root in the denominator. It had to go to the numerator, but, um, but that's okay. It's better than having it in the denominator a lot of the time. We can rationalize the numerator too, but, um, and then it would just shift it, the root from the numerator to the denominator, but a lot of the time we're moving from uh, the root in the denominator to the numerator. So let's just do a quick example here. If I've got one over root six, maybe I should write it properly. Rationalize one over root six. So if I have one over root six, that's going to be the same as one over root six times root six over root six. Root six over root six is just one, right? So one over root six is um, times root six over root six, just one over root six, right? So I'm not changing anything. They're still equivalent. But now I've got root six on the top and root six times root six is just six in the denominator. So that's not so bad. It gets a little bit trickier if you've got um, kind of a trickier root in the denominator. So that's why we've got this kind of general description here. So in general, if we have a denominator in the form of the nth root of a to the m, right, uh, one thing that we're assuming is that m is less than n because if it's larger then you should be able to simplify this a little bit more, right? Um, but that's okay we can just kind of ignore it for now. Uh, then what we do, so here, up here, it's kind of easy what, to see what you're gonna multiply by, right? What your convenient value of one is gonna be. It's gonna be the same as the bottom. Here, if you have uh, the nth root of a to the m, it's gonna be a, a little bit different, right? So your convenient value of one is gonna be the nth root of a to the n minus m. So you have to identify your n and identify your m and then I uh, use that. So here, your convenient value of one will be the nth root of a to the n minus, oops, n minus m over the nth root of a to the n minus m. Okay. 
So, and then at the bottom, so we'll go through and we'll do an, an example, but uh, a fractional expression whose denominator contains no radicals is said to be in standard form. So you can call it rationalizing, you can call it standard form, um, but we just want to have no roots. So we can look at how it looks in general. So if I want to try to get rid of this root and I have the nth root of a to the power of m, and just to, to illustrate that this will be the one that undoes it, we've got the nth root of a to the n minus m. Okay, that's what we're saying that we should be using. And it's not obvious, um, so that's going to be something just to kind of remember or, or have on your on your formula sheet or whatever. So um, because I've got the nth root and the nth root, I'm able to combine them. So now I've got the nth root of a, same basis, right? So I've got the base of a and the base of a. So I'm allowed to combine these exponents. So just have the base of a to the power of m plus n minus m. m minus m is zero. So now I've got the a to the power of n underneath the nth root, but if I take the nth root of a to the power of n, I know I just get to a. So that's why it works. Uh, but to me, at least, looking at this, it's not immediately obvious that I would undo it with this. Right. So let's have a look at an example. <clears throat> um, Put it down here. Put a over the sixth root of b squared into standard form. Okay. So I'm going to let you have a go because I want to check on uh, just a quick note that I had from before. So I'll go ahead and try that out. Don't want to miss anything from before. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is if I want to put it in standard form, then what I really want is no roots in the denominator. So what I have to do is I say, okay, well, a over the sixth root of b squared First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight, okay, well, here, n, if I'm trying to match it to the description I have above here, n would be 6, and m would be 2. So then to rationalize this, then I've got the same thing, a over the sixth root of b squared times, okay, the nth root of a to the n minus m. So I need the sixth root of, now here's where it gets confusing, right? I've got an a here, but really I have a b in the square root, so I'm going to have b to the n minus m. We have to be really careful. B to the six minus two over the exact same thing, right? The sixth root of B to the six minus two. So this becomes A times the sixth root of B to the power of four. over, and then the sixth root, I'm not going to simplify quite yet, of b squared times the sixth root of b to the power of, I could keep it as 6 minus 2 and then combine them, 
Um, might be fun to just try it a different way. So six minus two becomes four. I'm able to combine these because I have the same root, right? Root six times root six. So I can rewrite that as a to the sixth root of b to the four over the sixth root of b squared times b to the fourth. <clears throat> b squared times b to the fourth is b to the power of two plus four, which is six. So then I've got a times the sixth root of b to the fourth over the sixth root of b to the sixth. In my mind, I just kind of think of these things as canceling. So now I've got a times the sixth root of b to the four over b. Hmm. And I don't see an easy way to simplify this any further, right? Um, if this was uh, b to the three, then I could deal with three over six, right? But uh, four over six, yeah, I could simplify it a little bit, but it's not gonna change anything here, right? I'm still gonna have a power inside and a root on the outside, so I'm just gonna leave it. Good. This is now in standard form. Okay, cool. So again, I'm just keeping an eye on the chat, but I haven't seen any questions come in. So I guess we'll just keep going to 1.3. Now, section 1.3 is really large, so there's a lot of material in there, and so usually it takes me about, um, about a day to cover it, um, but now we've spent quite a bit of time on uh, finishing 1.2, so it, it could take us the, next, the whole week, potentially. Just so you're aware, so you're not worried about um, the timing or anything. It's not for you to worry about. It's for me to worry about. So uh, we're into 1.3, and it's going to be in the fundamentals part two that I posted um, on Moodle. So you should have them. And what you'll notice is that um, in 1.3, I started putting kind of some practice problems as well. And so we'll go through a, just a couple of these, maybe one or two, depending on the difficulty of things. Um, but so we'll go through some of them together. And then I've got a note to, to make sure that I've got the solutions to all those so you can go through and check your work uh, just for practice. Okay. So uh, 1.3, I'll put it on a fresh page here. 1.3 is on algebraic expressions. So algebraic expressions we'll see are just kind of, uh, we'll start with polynomials, which I don't know, it should be familiar somewhat, uh, but we'll talk about polynomials and then um, how we can manipulate them, so adding, multiplying polynomials, that kind of thing. Subtracting, not dividing yet. That's, uh, I think, the next section. Okay. So, algebraic expressions deals with polynomials. So let's establish polynomials and just some terms around polynomials. So in general, a polynomial looks like this, right? So we've got some coefficients and then we've got times x to the power of something, right? And then we've got another coefficient times x to the power of something else, right? Something less than the first one. And then we keep going until we've got a 
which is some coefficient times x plus and then just some constant. Okay. And so these little guys, the a's we call coefficients, and, um, and the highest power of x that's available, usually we list the powers of x uh, in decreasing order. So we have the highest power first, and then we, uh, we try to list them in decreasing order. Um, but the highest power of x is called the degree of a polynomial. Okay. So let's just break this up. So we've got a n x to the n plus a n minus one. So these subscripts are just to denote that a n is different from a n minus one, right? They don't have to be the same coefficient. Uh, they're just some number times x to the n minus one plus all the way to a one x plus eight or a zero. Here are some things that are kind of missing here is technically x is x to the power of one and a subscript zero is technically times x to the power of zero, right? But remember, anything to the power of zero is one, right? So a subscript zero times one is just a zero, so that's why we've dropped it. But this is gonna be a good reminder that, okay, well, anything to the power of zero is just one, so it's gonna just kind of dissolve away, leaving you only with a coefficient. Um, so like I said, these, I should use a different color here, so these guys, these a's, are all coefficients. Just some terminology. Each thing here, right, is a term. So we call this a term and we can have multiple terms being added together and that makes a polynomial. And the highest power of, um, of n, let's see, color can I use, is the degree of the polynomial. Or the highest power of x, I should say, I guess. Um, the highest power of x is the degree of the polynomial. Right, so just like uh, we established, okay, a fraction is a numerator over a denominator because we needed that terminology, that's exactly what we're doing here. Right, we need to be able to talk about coefficients, we need to be able to talk about terms, we need to be able to talk about the degree of a polynomial. So, let's see here. Uh, the number of terms are usually how we uh, name our, our polynomials. So, if we have just some coefficient times x to the power of something and that's it, we have a monomial, right? One nomial or one term. Um, poly means multiple, right? So polynomial just means multiple terms here, right? We can have a binomial, which is two terms. Trinomial is three terms. And then we kind of uh, just call them polynomials after that. In fact, just two terms, you can't just call it a polynomial. But it's good to have heard the terminology. Okay, so um, we can work with polynomials. So we'll start by adding and subtracting polynomials, uh, which really isn't that bad. Um, and then we'll get to multiplying polynomials, which takes a little bit of patience. Uh, it's not hard, you just need to kind of buckle down and, and do it thoroughly.
I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's uh, they're working on the deck in the back. Uh, so yay. Um, but also yesterday it was so loud. Uh, it was like ns, 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 ns. if they're pounding or drilling or okay. So what we do if we're adding polynomials, then we want to be able to simplify things. And so to simplify things, we're going to be collecting like terms. So like terms are anything with the same powers uh, and the same basis, right? And so what we're doing is technically we're pulling out this common multiple of x to the seven here, right? We've got five x to the seven plus three x to the seven. If I pull out that common x to the seven, then I'm able to just add the five plus three, the coefficient, and make this fresh and fly new coefficient of eight. Right, that's technically what we're doing, but I mean, for us, five uh, x to the seven plus three x to the seven, if you just jumped to eight x to the seven, that's totally fine, right? I, I do kind of expect you to be there. But. Uh, if you're subtracting polynomials, right, it's really important that we remember this negative outside, right? So if I've got um, some, uh, you know, a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus a squared plus b squared, right? I have to take that minus on both sides. So all the terms in the inside have to get negated. So we get negative b minus c once we bring it in. Okay. And so this is the distributive property. We've seen it before, uh, and now we're going to get lots of practice with it. So let's see here. I'll steal. We'll just do one of these because adding and subtracting is, uh, is not, not bad. But let's see what we got here. I'm just going to have it here. I'll write it out on the next page anyways. So let's do, let's work through um, 22. So we want to find the sum, the difference, or the product, uh, the product because we're bringing in um, some multiple on the outside. So 22 looks like 4 times x squared minus 3x plus 5 minus 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. What I'm going to do, because this is going to get pretty large, right? Um, the distributive property says I have to multiply each term here by 4 and then each term here by negative 3. So I'm going to have to expand this out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write my equal sign down below to give myself more space because remember we want to try to stack our equal signs. So I'm just going to write it below and I'm, I'm allowed to do that. So what happens? is this four gets multiplied on each of these terms. Okay. So I end up with four x squared plus four times negative three x plus four times five. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put brackets around here to indicate that, hey, everything in here came from this first kind of well, polynomial, but uh, first kind of chunk of stuff. Right? And then I'm going to do my uh, minus 3x squared. I don't want to confuse you guys by doing plus negative 3x squared, although um, in the long run it might, might make more sense. So just be open to that. Um, but minus 3x squared uh, minus 3 times negative 2x minus 3 times 1. There are fancier ways to do it. In fact, hopefully you're, you're comfortable enough to just kind of not work with the brackets so much, especially when it's kind of easy math like this, right? Negative 3 times negative 2 
six. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of expand all these out, ditch all the brackets, and see what, where I am at. So 4x squared, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 times x, plus 4 times 5 is 20, minus 3x squared, minus 3 times negative 2x puts me at plus 6x, and then minus 3 times 1 is just minus 3. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect like terms. So I've got 4x squared and I've got minus 3x squared. So I'm just going to I'm just going to collect them. And the reason that I'm doing that is you could easily just skip ahead. That's fine. Um, but for me, especially when things get really large, I like to be able to count and make sure that everything's accounted for. Um, because otherwise you might miss a term and then it's lost and yeah. So just be careful. So I've got 4x squared minus 3x squared and then minus 12x plus 6x plus 20 minus 3. So now I've collected like terms and I'm able to simplify. So I get 4 minus 3 is just x squared. Negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6x. 20 minus 3 uh, plus 17. And just to make sure, right, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six terms here. One, two, three, four, five, six terms. So that's good. And as long as I know I've taken care of all of these to get to this last step, then I know I'm good. Good. Okay. So that's adding or subtracting uh, polynomials. Now let's talk about multiplying polynomials. So you might have heard of FOIL in the past. Um, FOIL is an acronym to tell you how to do things. I personally don't find it very helpful. If you find it helpful, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, but for me, I just work methodically and just kind of multiply things through. So if we're multiplying algebraic expressions, we need to have our wits about us. Okay. So here's the, the little note on FOIL, that's fine. But essentially what it's describing is, is if I'm multiplying two binomials, meaning two polynomials each with two terms. So a plus b times c plus d is an example of uh, two binomials being multiplied. So that's the only time that FOIL helps. Um, but really, at the end of the day, you just need to multiply through. So a has to get multiplied by c as well as d. And then b has to multiply c as well as d and we just kind of expand it. So one way you could think about it is, well, you could break up and say a times c plus d, right? a times c plus d plus b times c plus d, right? Or I just kind of go boop, boop, and then boop, boop. I'll do lines later, okay? In fact, it looks like this, right? You do, uh, from the first term has to multiply each of the, um, the next set of terms, and then the next term has to multiply through, and so on and so forth. So you can just keep going with as many uh, terms as you want. Okay. Okay. So, and then we collect like terms, and then we we can simplify. Let's do an example.
Okay. So if we do, uh, let's do 30. So if I've got 4x minus 5y times 3x minus y, I have to multiply this. Um, it says using the FOIL method. I don't care which method you use. I just want you to be able to simplify this. Okay, multiply and simplify. So what I'm gonna do is, first things first, I'm gonna take this 4x times 3x. Okay, so just to show what's going on, I'm gonna write this. And in fact, I'm gonna scoot this over just a bit because I'm gonna need the room. So in light blue, that's the first thing that I'm doing. 4x times 3x is 4 times 3 and then x times x. So maybe I'll just do it like this, 4x times 3x, fine. I'm not simplifying yet. Then I've got my green. So then I've got, and I'm just gonna do plus and keep my negatives in brackets for now. So I've got plus negative 5y times, oh, what am I doing? Sorry guys, pretend that didn't happen quite yet. I don't know why I did that. There, I bet you some of you were confused there. I mean, you can, but that isn't very methodical, is it? Okay, plus, 4x times negative y, making sure you keep that negative on the y. Uh, now, I'm gonna take the negative 5y times 3x. So I'm just gonna kind of write it a little bit wonky here, but plus negative 5y times 3x. And then finally, negative 5y times negative y. So plus negative 5y times negative y. Notice that I'm keeping the pluses and then just keeping the negatives on the terms um, because it's going to be a lot safer, right? You can just kind of um, pull the negative out and have subtraction there. But we're just introducing this stuff, right? So I'm trying to play it safe. 4x times 3x is 12x squared. Plus 4x times negative y is negative 4xy. So minus 4xy. And then I've got negative 5y times 3x. Okay, so that puts me at uh, minus 15xy. And notice that I'm writing the xy, so uh, if we read it, it would be yx, but just so I can see clearly that this is the same term as this, right, collecting like terms later on, then I'm going to want to have xy and xy, so I'm not having to read yx as xy. And then I've got plus, because then I've got negative 5y times negative y is plus 5y squared. <clears throat> so here, uh, maybe I should try a different color, maybe this one. Collect like terms. So what I've got is I've got uh, just 12x squared on its own. There's no other x squareds in here, so that's fine. I've got an xy term and an xy term, so that's why I said I'm going to collect like terms. And then I've got a y squared just on its own. So what I've got is I've got 12x squared, negative 4 minus 15 puts me at negative 19xy plus 5y squared. Okay, awesome. 
cool, cool, cool. Oh, should we work a little bit more? More examples? All right. I'll steal some more here. So we are going to work through, let's see here. Maybe I'll make it smaller and keep it on this page here. Uh, I want to do, so we're going to do 51 just to kind of get a, a little start here. We're going to do 51, 58, where is it? A little bit bigger and 60. Just in case you're keen on working ahead and seeing kind of where you're at. Um, so I've got the root x times x minus root x. Give that a go. Now remember you can deal with exponents, right? You can rewrite your roots as exponents if you want, if it's helpful. Um, making sure that you distribute that root x onto each of the terms. Right, so what it's gonna look like is I've got root x times x. What's kind of tricky is, unless you write the dot, um, I actually find that it looks a lot nicer if you just write the x on the outside, so on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna do that instead. Uh, x root x. Then there's no, kind of no doubt that they're being multiplied. So I've got x times root x minus root x times root x which we know is just going to be x. Right? So uh, what does it say? Perform the indicated operations and simplify. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, we can definitely simplify this, right? That's just going to be x. Uh, and then let's try to simplify this and see where we get to and see which one we like. Okay. Uh, I say that because it's not going to change much. Okay. So I've got x times technically x to the one half. Okay. Instead of jumping straight to x, I'm going to show where it came from because we, we are just kind of getting used to that still, but I do expect you to just be able to jump to x from here. Uh, but here's why. So you get x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. With the same base, right, in each of these terms, we've got the same base. So now I'm able to combine these exponents just by adding. So I get x to the 1 plus 1 half minus x to the 1 half plus 1 half. Here I've got a common denominator of two, right? I'm adding fractions, so that's why we had to spend time adding fractions. I'm adding fractions, and here I'm also adding a fraction, right? One over one plus one over two, not the same base, or uh, sorry, not the same denominator. So here I have to find a common denominator first. Here I can just combine the two, right, to get two over two, which we know is just one. So here we have x, times one, or to the power of one, times two over two, plus one over two minus x to the power of one is just x. So here I've got x to the power of, oops, two over two, plus one over two minus x, x to the power of 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2 is 3 over 2. So x to the 3 over 2 minus x. 
this I know I can rewrite a little bit nicer. And so it's going to be the same as the root, the second, the square root, right? Because I've got the two in the denominator of x to the power of three minus x. So that's just another way I could write it. Okay. So should be getting better at manipulating these things. How about uh, 58? So 58, I'll just write it out here. And I'll have to steal it from here because I'm... All right, I've got the root of h squared plus one, and then not under the square root, plus one times the root of h squared plus one. And again, not under the root times minus one. So you want to be really careful there. And notice that I, I try to put these little lips on the root uh, in case there's ever any kind of doubt what's under the root, then I can say, okay, well, h squared plus one is under the root, the plus one is not, right? And so it's gonna behave very differently. So again, I'm gonna put my equal sign underneath here because I think I'm gonna need a lot of room here. Um, but as long as we're kind of careful and we treat this as one thing. Now, we can't split this root because I'm adding inside, right? Remember, we can only split the root if we're multiplying or dividing inside, right? So if we're adding or subtracting under the root, we can't split it up. It has to, it's a package deal, right? So I'll make a note of that here. Can't split the root if we are adding or subtracting inside, right? So I'll just add that we must treat this as a, as a package. We must treat this oops, treat this as a package. So what we get, right, looking at, okay, I'm going to take the first term and I'm going to multiply it by each of the terms in the second um, polynomial and then move on to the second term, multiply it across. And so what I get is I get the root of h squared plus one. And I'm just going to put tons of brackets here. I'm, I'm just going to overload with brackets just to kind of keep things together. So to show that this is a package deal. So same with the next one. So times the root of h squared plus one, also in the same package. Then I've got plus the root of h squared plus one times negative one plus, I'm just gonna, so notice here, if I run out of room, typically what I do is I bump in, or what you should do is you should bump in your, your plus sign, right, from your equals, and then it's clear that it should just kind of keep going and you read it across like that. Just math things to learn as we go. Um, so now I've got one times the root of h squared plus one, and then plus one times negative one. What's nice here is under the square root, I've got the same term, right? I've got h squared plus one, or the same terms, I should say. h squared plus one, h squared plus one. So that means that this root is just gonna go away and all I'm left with is h squared plus one. Because technically we've got the the square root of h squared plus one squared, those are gonna cancel, right? Uh, here, I've got negative h squared plus one uh, square rooted plus h squared plus one positive. 
those look like they're gonna go away, but we'll see. Uh, and then plus negative one. So here I've got the root of h squared plus one squared, but I know just from experience that this is gonna go, and from what we talked about before, right? The power of two is gonna cancel the square root. Uh, sorry, I'll bring that negative out front, minus the root of h squared plus one, and then plus the root of h squared plus one, which absolutely you could just skip and say uh, that these two are just gonna be equal to zero. I'm not yet, but I will, and then minus one. Okay. So what I'm left with here is I've got h squared plus one, uh, plus zero, minus one. h squared plus one minus one puts me at h squared. Womp womp. That's all we get to. Okay. So this whole mess simplifies to just h squared. Okay. So if we do 60, 60 is gonna give us a, a run for our money, right? We have a look at it. X plus two plus X squared times X minus two plus X squared. So we'll have to be careful with these brackets. Um, let's see where we get to. So, da, 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 da. Uh, 60, okay, it looks like this. X plus bracket two plus X squared, bracket, bracket, times X minus bracket two plus X squared. There are a couple of things that we could notice. We could notice that two plus X squared and two plus X squared, we could treat that as one thing and maybe that'll uh, make things easier. In this case, I don't think so. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and uh, expand this. But notice that these brackets, the brackets around 2 plus x squared, especially in the first lump, uh, those brackets don't do anything because I'm not multiplying. I've got a, a positive out front, right? And so I'm just going to dissolve those brackets to try to get to that simpler form. Here, I'm gonna to need to bring this negative inside before I can dissolve these brackets. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna simplify inside each of these before I go ahead and kind of expand and simplify. So this becomes x plus two plus x squared, fine, times x minus two minus x squared. Right, so I've dissolved those, uh, those brackets inside the brackets. Now I have to deal with outside brackets. If there was any more simplification that I could do here, I would. Um, one thing we talked about is writing polynomials with the highest power first and then decreasing powers. I'm not going to do that until the end, but you definitely can, right? Rewrite it as x squared plus x plus 2 and then times negative x squared plus x minus two, that's fine. But like I said, I'm just gonna save that reorganizing until the end. So what I need to do is I need to take x times x plus x times negative two plus x times negative x squared, then on to the next term, two times x plus two times negative two, two plus two times negative x squared, and then finally, x squared times x plus x squared times negative two plus x squared times negative x squared. Right. Harder to say than to write, I find. So I've got x times x, and I'm gonna use brackets. Um, if you wanted to skip to just x squared immediately, that's totally fine. 
uh, x times x plus x times negative 2 plus x times negative x squared, okay, plus 2 times x plus 2 times negative 2 plus 2 times negative x squared plus x squared times x plus x squared times negative 2 plus x squared times negative x squared. Oof, so long. Okay. Now I can uh, simplify all these things and then I'm going to collect like terms and hopefully things will kind of cancel out uh, or at least simplify a little bit. So I've got x squared minus 2x minus x to the 3, right? Getting more comfortable with combining these, um, these powers, right? I've got the same base of x. So now I've got x to the 1 times x to the 2 negative out front, right? The negative gets bumped out front. So I've got x to the 3, right? So I'm assuming that you're more comfortable with that plus 2x minus 4 minus 2x squared plus x to the 3 minus 2x squared minus x to the 4th. What I want to do is I just want to count to make sure that I have the correct number of terms, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Looks good. So assuming that I did everything right, I have the right number of terms at least, right? And so uh, you always want to just check in and make sure that you have the correct number of terms. Okay. Because they're so large, I'm going to leave a space in between. All right. So to collect like terms, right, I've got an x squared uh, here, here, and here. Okay. I've got an x here, here, and that's it. I've got x to the 3 and x to the 3. And then the negative 4 is the only uh, constant, right? So the only number in here. Uh, and then the minus x to the 4 is um, my only x to the 4. So that's going to be my, my highest power, it looks like, as well. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to collect like terms, and then I'm going to rearrange it in the order of the powers. I'm going to throw out some brackets in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have x squared minus 2x squared minus 2x squared. Okay. Plus negative 2x plus 2x plus negative x to the 3 plus x to the 3. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Minus 4 minus x to the 4. Again, I'm just going to recount these just to make sure I still have 9. Another thing that you could do here is as you go through and you write these all out, you could uh, cancel them up above. Sometimes I'll do that. Um, either way, just make sure that you've got them all. Got to catch them all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I've still got 9 terms, so that's good. Okay, x squared, x squared, x squared. I can pull out that common x squared in theory is what I'm doing, uh, but all you do is just deal with the coefficients. So one minus two minus two. So one minus two is negative one, minus two again is negative three. So what we get is negative three x squared. Okay. 
the next term is going to be plus negative 2x plus 2x is just plus 0. Easy peasy. Same thing with the next one, right? Plus negative x to the 3 plus x to the 3 also going to go to 0. So it just kind of dissolves away plus 0 minus 4 minus x to the 4. So now I'm just going to rewrite these in with the x to the 4 out front, right? So rewrite um, in decreasing powers of x. Just because that's the, the proper way to write polynomials. So we want to get in the habit of doing that. So rewrite uh, in decreasing powers of, or width, maybe? Yeah, rewrite with decreasing powers of x. So what that's going to look like is now I'm going to have negative x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4. This is good. This is simplified. Uh, there are a lot of negatives here. In fact, each term has a negative. So one thing that might make things easier later on is being able to pull out that negative. If you pull out a negative from each of these, what that's going to look like is you're going to have negative x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 4. Right. Uh, negative x to the 4, what's 3? Uh, Oh, okay. So it sounds like, because I've got the work I did before, and I've got the 3x squared. So it looks like Finley and Vaughn found the same thing. <clears throat> but it sounds like maybe if you forgot to distribute this negative here. Sounds like might be the pickle. And that's really common, right? So you do, you want to keep, be very, very careful because otherwise you've done all this work uh, for nothing, right? Which would make sense, right? Uh, if you had plus x squared instead, then that should give you, yeah, that'll be the difference because the pickle, so hopefully that's okay. Let me know if, uh, if it still doesn't work, then we can go back and look at it. Nice. Oh, thanks guys. Um, the initial foil created, let's see here. Uh, X squared. Hmm. I'm just looking at mine here. Oops. Uh, so you're probably around here, it looks like. Because you get x squared minus x. So you did x squared. Hmm minus x times 2 plus x squared. Okay, fine. Uh, and then x, so plus x times 2 plus x squared. Yeah, okay. And then minus 2 plus x squared squared. Uh-huh. So then you've got, I think the problem is, okay, so let's just write it out here. So what we've got is we've got, so everything, so that looks good. I'm just going to write out what you have here. X squared minus X times two plus X squared 
plus x times 2 plus x squared minus 2 plus x squared squared. Okay. So, uh, yep, you should be able to just cancel these. These are the same. Okay. So we've got x squared minus 2 plus x squared squared, which is going to be x squared minus 2 plus x squared times 2 plus x squared. So I'm going to deal with this first and just make sure that I get to the same thing. Times 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, plus 2x squared plus 2x squared plus x to the fourth. x squared minus 4 minus, keep it in brackets for a little bit longer, plus 4x squared plus x to the fourth. Let's see where it gets us. x squared minus 4 minus 4x squared minus x to the fourth. Okay. Uh, so now I've got rewriting these, right? I've got x squared minus 4x squared puts me at negative 3x squared. Uh, but I'll rewrite them in order. x squared minus 4x squared minus 4 minus x to the fourth. Okay, good. Which is going to be uh, negative 3x squared minus 4 minus x to the fourth, which still... Uh, mm, yeah, you want to be super, super careful, right? So this... Uh, so Vaughn just mentioned that uh, what went wrong was that this, this power of 2 actually can't get distributed in. We can only do that if we're multiplying or dividing inside, right? And so that's the only time that we're allowed to do that. Uh, if we're adding or subtracting, we have to be really careful, right? Because this becomes 2 plus x squared times 2 plus x squared, right? And so what you'll see is... Uh, that's very different from just uh, pulling that square inside, but that's really good. So just something that we need to keep track of. Okay. So uh, just to finish this off, I'll do negative x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 4. Okay, so, uh, good, so I'll just do or here, just to show that that's another way that we could do it. And because you're all here, you saw what happened, and that's great. Okay, oh, so what I was saying, so being able to pull this negative out front is going to be really useful, right? So if you see negative, 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 it might be uh, beneficial to you to, to just pull that negative out front because then maybe if you have a, a negative that you can cancel with, right, um, then no one likes negatives, right? So, so then you might be able to cancel it out and, and get rid of it somehow. Good. So, um, Good. The last thing I want to do today is just introduce the special product formulas. So the special product formulas um, aren't that bad. They look like this. So what's nice about the special product formulas uh, is, okay, well, being able to go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side isn't that bad, right? We can just do that by hand. In fact, 
we're going to maybe go through, yeah, let's do this, uh, I'd say the hardest one on here. And I'll just show you how to expand this from here to here. Right? Um, so that's not the hard part. The, where it becomes useful is as long as you're able to recognize these uh, kind of patterns, right, and say, oh, I think that's a special product, then you can kind of um, factor it back into this special product. So um, we'll see it more later on, but uh, being able to recognize these patterns and saying, oh, okay, well, that's a special, you know, a special square um, that I'll be able to use or a special cube in, in the last two cases. Okay, so these are, these are not for memorizing, okay? They're for recognizing right, and knowing that they exist. So here, uh, I'll just make a note. It will be uh, useful, right, to be able to recognize these patterns. So it will be useful to be able to recognize these patterns. Um, mostly for factoring later on, but just to kind of get into the groove. So what I wanna do uh, as an exercise is I just wanna go, so like I said, moving from the left-hand side to the right hand side is not not hard right tedious but not hard okay. so what we want to do is let's just have a look at how this five behaves and it does kind of incorporate what we just saw right that we can't just distribute this uh this power of three inside because we have to remember that a minus b to the power of three is a minus b times a minus b times a minus b. So we have to, uh, to remember that and, and work with that. But it's good to have these kind of, um, kind of breaks, right? Put the breaks on. This is the same as a minus b times a minus b times a minus b. We've only looked at multiplying two polynomials. We can extend it to three. All we do is we deal with these first two and then we do it again and we expand onto the, the second or I guess the third polynomial, but now it's the second once this is combined into one. So what we do is we expand this first Uh, see Finley, no worries. Um, we're almost done anyways. So, um, we'll deal with those first two first, kind of ignoring the third one. You'll always want to keep it there because you don't want to forget about it. Um, and then then expand this. And so that's kind of the, how it's going to go. So what it's going to look like is I've got a times a, so I've got a squared and then plus a times negative b and then plus negative b times a plus negative b times negative b. So what we end up with, I'll bump this down a little bit give me some space, is I get a squared, right? So we should be kind of comfortable just rewriting it as a squared. a squared uh, plus a times negative b 
And if you wanted to write it as minus AB, that's totally fine. In fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite, because if you're multiplying, the order doesn't matter, right? And so uh, negative B times A, I can write as A times negative B and still have the same looking thing. So plus A times negative B. Boom. Maybe just show where it came from. OK, fine. Negative B times A. And then plus negative B times negative B. Huh? Oof, I'm going to need more space here. So I'm going to scoot this over. I know I said to stack your equal signs, but I want to have it on the same line. <clears throat> times A minus B. Right. So this here inside these brackets, that's my first two expanded. And then here's my third uh, polynomial. So then this becomes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to simplify this inside first, just in case I can get it a little bit easier to look at. And then I'm going to expand it onto a minus b. So I have uh, just one a squared, a squared minus a b minus a b. So this is where I switch the order just so it's easier to see that I've got uh, two terms with a b. So these would be like terms. And then plus b squared. Put that in brackets. And then times a minus b. So uh, I can collect like terms here. And so I have uh, a squared minus 2ab oops, plus b squared times a minus b. You'll notice that this first term is just a, a minus b squared, which is actually up here. A minus B squared is A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. So that's what I mean. So you don't need to memorize these. You can easily just go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side just by putting in the work. And it's going to be more predictable that way. So now I can expand A squared into A minus B, negative 2AB into A minus B, and then B squared into A minus B. So here we go. I get a to the power of three plus a squared times negative b minus, so plus negative two ab times a plus negative two ab times negative b plus b squared times a plus b squared times negative b. Okay. So, all right. Now we can kind of start to just simplify this, collect like terms if there are any, uh, and then we'll see that we'll slowly approach this. Right. So this becomes, I'll give us a space here, a to the three minus a squared b minus two a squared b, okay? plus, because negative 2 times negative b is plus 2ab squared plus ab squared plus, oh, minus, because I've got negative b, minus b to the power of 3. Okay, it's looking better. Collecting like terms. They're already collected, right? I've got an a to the three. There's no other a to the threes, so that's on its own. 
a squared b, a squared b, these I collect as like terms, and then a b squared and a b squared can get collected. So I'm just going to show that here. These are like terms, and these are like terms. And then the b to the power of 3 is just on its own. So I get a to the power of 3, negative a squared b minus 2a squared b. So that's essentially my, negative 1 minus 2. So that's negative 3a squared b plus 2ab squared plus ab squared is 3ab squared minus b to the 3, which should be what we have here a to the 3 minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b to the 3. Okay. So that um, is just how you find these. So you want to be really careful, right? Uh, and maybe for practice, you can try just expanding all of these to make sure that you get to the right-hand side, right? You want to make sure that you've got these uh, under control. All right, I've been keeping my eye on the chat. I haven't seen any questions, but if there are any questions, um, let me know. Okay. Otherwise, we're done for today. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording because I don't see any questions. Um,